So we just had the end of the third round. We had some big results with Andy Murray going out, Raonic going through, Krajinovic going through again. And we also had some amazing quarterfinal matchups today with Medvedev, Batista Agut, and also Novak Djokovic. Hi, I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudla. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Larson. I'm Peter Turetko, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. So, we had the match that was being played last night. Uh, we, we were watching it whilst uh, we were doing the podcast, and Andy Murray goes tumbling out of the Cincinnati or the Western and Southern Open against Milos Raonic, and hate to say we sort of saw it coming. Uh, mm. But Milos, Milos Raonic, just a, just a force on the court, wasn't he? Well, yeah, before I get into it, I feel like I'm seeing a bit too much of you, Ben, that's for sure. These podcasts <laughs> daily yeah. is it's a bit intense, for sure. I know, I feel like we're back at work again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, Milos Raonic, te- tearing it, yeah, he's a brilliant player, he's not actually dropped a set as per yet. No. And he beat Murray quite comfortably, like we both saw it coming kind of thing, but we there's a bit inside of us thinking, you never know with Murray, anything's possible. Obviously, he's got such a brilliant record against uh, Raonic and beating him on so many of the big stages, notably Wimbledon finals. So there was always that like ounce of you never know, but it's not that same Murray, is it? And Raonic at the end was just too yeah. strong. You said it, didn't you? You just said it's not really the Murray of old yet. He didn't nah. really, he, he wasn't really at his best in Battle of the Brits and he lost to Evans, lost to Edmund. For some reason... Zverev is an easier matchup in my mind, like in the current situation, the way things are, than Evans and Edmund, because I just feel that Zverev just has a very laid back attitude, like he doesn't really care a little bit, I think, at the at the moment during this pandemic. So well, his serving's not really firing, is it? <laughs> it's just, yeah. I know what you mean. His whole persona on court doesn't seem like he's um, really up for it. Well, I think he's just got caught up a little bit in the whole. Uh, lifestyle of everything and his the tennis has taken a bit of a back seat but no. yeah we're not here to focus on as alexander zverev because he's crashed out long ago but milos raonic i think it's just crazy how well he's playing in this tournament and he's what probably we said it before the dark horse that you could see going all the way in this tournament mm. the way he's playing i think against murray he just some of the shots he was playing. It's just very well structured points. I mean, and he's got so he suffocated Murray completely. It was just too yeah. powerful, and um, he's playing really good tennis. Not yeah. dropped a set as well so far. And he's played quite a few matches. So yeah, I mean, they his... played to him. Yeah, just the power. Just Murray couldn't really handle it. There was like slight opportunities that you would have to take against Raonic, and he couldn't take the break points when they came. And the only six, thing I can say, though... Oh, sorry, what was you saying? No, no, 6262 is comprehensive, isn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah. The only thing I was going to say is that with Murray, in a way, it's kind of a good thing what's happened because it's a bit too much strain for him to be going too deep into this tournament with the US Open coming up. In a way, at least it's given him a, a good amount of run of running of games where he's, played, he's got his match fitness up a bit, but not yeah. too much where he's over-exuberated his body and pushed any any part of him, which is a bit too much. So, in theory, he should be in good stead for the US Open. And it'll be good to see if he can play some of the... He's played some really good tennis this week. Even against Raonic, there were some flashes of brilliance from him. So, it's good that he's there. And I think that he's going to have a, a better US Open than Cincinnati as well. So, it could be a bit of a shock. Yeah, I mean, it's all dependent on the draws, isn't it? I think yeah. you just never know. And obviously, he's got a wild card, so... You might see him playing somebody like a Zverev again very early on or someone up the top echelon of players. But mm. we can always just look forward to that and just hope that he's just learn, well, learning how to get back to basics a little bit. And you saw, like you said, flashes of brilliance. And it's just about movement around the court, maybe just the shot selection, all of that sort of stuff coming back to him. I think he can. He, he's gradually getting better and better, like, and you've seen it. But someone like you don't want to come up against someone like Milos Raonic playing like that because that just doesn't do any any favors. Because you're just 
you're you're in defensive mode the whole time. You just you yeah. didn't have much chance for offense in that whole match. And he had the brain delay, which we thought might help him, but no, nah, it didn't really help him at all, did it? No, nah, not at all. One thing right I thought, was on the wall for that one. Yeah. One thing I thought was quite uh I don't know why I spotted this. It was a bit of a weird uh thing. I don't know why I thought I was gonna bring it up at the end, but I'll bring it up now. I thought Mil- <laughs> Milos Milos has possibly the shiniest legs I've ever seen of any tennis player. <laughs> like, that every time that because he won, Why are you so, looking at his legs? Well, every time he because he won so many points, they always focus on the person who just won the point. And he was normally either at the net or as soon as he'd hit a winner, he turns and he walks back towards the back of the court. And his legs were like glistening i don't know i've never seen someone's legs so shiny, Wait, i can't but... say i even noticed it so oh, I'm, 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 gonna put, I'm gonna put up a video so everyone at home can see this but it's literally i just have me like cracking up while i was watching it. i was like i've never seen it like this is just ridiculous they were, i really want to see it myself now you've said uh, it it was like a swimmer's legs or something mate. Like, i just jumped out the pool <laughs> but yeah that was a very very strange observation but yeah i'll pop up the video for people to see See what you think. Uh, see if you've seen anybody else with uh, shinier legs than Raonic on tour. <laughs> Bit of a weird one, anyway. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. But let's get on to somebody who, for some reason, he has the nighttime slot every single night, and uh, he seems to be the boxer of the whole competition. He's dishing out ones and twos and knocking people out. It's another six. Two six one from, and I apologise from the last <laughs> episode. It is Krajinovic. It's a better pronunciation this time. Perfect. Uh, and yeah. he knocked out Martin Fuskovic uh, with ease, same as he did yeah, with yeah. team six two six one. Too strong. Yeah. Simply too strong. There's not really much to say about this match in terms of Fuskovic did not seem in it. Um, Krajinovic has been the way he's been playing this week has just been some of the best tennis I've seen. Yeah. from anyone really, aside from obviously we'll get on to Novak Djokovic later on, but Kronovic looks like the man the man in form. It's just the power. He's got a point to prove in this tournament. And uh, it's, I think it's the aggression more than the power. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. More, more aggressive. That's the one thing he's really stepped up and I noticed that the same thing. He's like he a terrier, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he did the same thing against uh, teams he did against Fuskovic as well. He just literally, this inside out aggressive forehand that he keeps playing that seems to be winning him so many like cheap points and if you drop it a little bit short he's just hammering that back Mm. and i thought one interesting stat that i heard today was out of all the people in the tournament do you know he's the only person that has a positive win record over novak djokovic Mm, <laughs> so I didn't know that. that's an interesting stat to go through if he can make they're not coming in the adria tour are they i think he beat <laughs> i think he beat him then well it's an interesting thing because if he keeps playing like the way he is he's, he's off the court within an hour but each time he's playing so yeah not, to be fair he's probably quite fresh isn't he yeah exactly he's the probably the freshest out of everybody and if he keeps playing in that manner and that level of accuracy and power and aggression I can't see anyone beating him at the moment, but he's got a very tough match coming up next. So It's, it's funny, though, when players are like this, because he's playing right now like he looks like he's unstoppable. Like no one, doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to stop him. Yeah. But then he could do this for this tournament, say. He'll play US Open next week. He'll come up against someone, maybe a lucky loser or something, or a, a, a random player, 200th in the world, whatever, first round, and go out. Yeah. Tennis is such a strange game. That's what I'm saying. That's why you've always got to be such... Yeah, you've got to be switched on at all times and just focused. And uh, for, Let's just talk about this tournament, obviously. But Cincinnati looks like it's um, all set up for him. Well, for me, real it's tennis. really him, Raonic. That's the next match. And Kranovic. They're the two informed players. And it turns out they're the next match. We're not going to be able to comment on that match in this podcast. We'll have to do that if we do one tomorrow. We'll have yeah. the latest game today. A great um, match. But that is going to be yo. Neither of them have dropped a set, so I'm looking forward to that the most out of all the matches. To be honest, I'm like I'm yeah. so intriguing because Raonic looks unstoppable, but then you look over at Kranovic and look what he's done. His body of work is even greater than Raonic's. So I'm going to make the prediction. Though. I think Kranovic is going to beat him. Wow, 
Yeah, I think uh, he's he's underdog. I'd assume probably. It's part does, of me that wants but... Krajinovic to win, but it's just dependent on that serve. If Raonic's serve is popping, then I don't know. I don't see. I'm hoping it's a real tight one, and we could see it go to. He can push it to three sets, and we could see some real, real back and forth. But I don't know. I can't really call it. I don't. I can't break in the third. Could be. Call it. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Like, <laughs> and that would take us on nicely because you said marathon match, and that match was going to be contested between Batista Agut and Daniel Medvedev. And what happened? Exactly what you said. Well, I'm marathon. not sure, really. It wasn't as marathon as I thought because oh, the it, first set was over quite quickly and but, Medvedev was on, was on fire. Well, he was, but it was. it still wasn't... It didn't really do it justice. Like, yeah, I agree. One seem, seem, I'm glad you said the same as what seem, I was going to say because it didn't really... Embarrassing. It seems like he smashed him, but he didn't, really. No, it was very close games, but he yeah, just... It was. He just kept on just edging ahead in those... Like, right at the end of the game each time and just getting those extra one in and he was hitting it harder, more accurate and the round is so flat. Both of them do. Well, the round is um, shorter. And that was the key to like Batista Agut obviously came through in three, which he did in the last match as well against Karen Hatchinov as well. Yeah. And it just goes to show, like you said, he's such a grinder. He grinds people to the bone, mate. He literally took Medvedev. Well, there's plenty each other. There was plenty each other in their same game, and that's exactly what I said they would do. Where they both are going to just grind each other out until one of you just can't, doesn't have anything left, le- like left in the point. And yeah. um, I saw so many times where there were so many long, lengthy rallies. And at the end of the day, I would say towards the beginning of the match, Medvedev was actually having the better of them. And I thought his returning off off a good serv- service, his returns, some of the best returns I've seen. It was up there with the likes of Ma- uh, Prime Murray and Djokovic. Yeah, yeah. It was really good. Medvedev was really impressing me with his returns. He the way he was hitting it so deep as well and just catching the line at times. But like you said, a good was there, grinded it out. And he'd come through in, in three sets. Well, I did, like I said, I thought it would go to three sets as well. Well, you said the grind thing and... That was so true in this match because some of the statistics showed that any matches, any, well, any, sorry, any matches, any games within this match that went over five minutes long, uh, Batista Agut won, I think, 90% of those games. So that yeah. goes to show the grind that he puts in in those juice games. He was taking nearly all of those juice games. And yeah, yeah. that was the key to this his victory today. He just literally just... And he he changed it up from the first set to the second and the third set. He changed up his tactics brilliantly. He started yeah. hitting a lot deeper and more central and mm. was forcing Medvedev to make angles himself. And mm. Medvedev was starting to make uncharacteristic errors. Like He, he likes to play. He doesn't really make errors, Medvedev. That's no. the thing. He's one of the guys on tour who makes least, uh, less uh, unforced errors than anyone. So it was a bit of a surprise seeing a few of them. But like you said, Gut was forcing it out tactics, of it. Tactics. Tactics. He did strategy was just perfect. He changed up from what happened in the first set and it worked perfect. And it still nearly came a cropper in that last in that last set though. Because he yeah. was four two up and then suddenly love forty down on his own serve. That Medvedev was pushing him, but what character of him won I think it was five points straight just to take that to five two. And then I think the writing was on the wall a bit. For no, me. no, after that, then no. It's still close, I, In the final set, he had break points Medvedev at 5-3 to, to break back to 5-4. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I mean. He still had the break points even then. So, mate, that's why you need to... I don't want to be too harsh on Medvedev at all, because no. I think it was, still a very, it was a very evenly contested match. So a good, wasn't that much better than him. He was just marginally, and in the big moments, he took them. If that match was played again... It could have been a different result. It was very close and there wasn't much to separate them. The and key, in fact, I was yeah. impressed with both players. But my main thing from it is both of them played e- equally as good. Obviously, a, a good one. So you could say he arguably played slightly better. But who do you reckon Djokovic would prefer to play? Because for me, I think a good is a much favourable draw against Djokovic than, say, what Medvedev would have been. Yeah, I mean, I just think for power... Uh, I think Medvedev, that's where he's always caused Djokovic more problems is he starts hit, he starts really hitting through the ball and he was doing it on some of the points today and you get to really see that the, the rally really changes as soon as he starts doing that. 
And I think I don't think got... he does that that often though. For me, it's more the craftiness with Medvedev. He's not he's not someone who's going to always strike through the ball the hard. Like he's not always, he's just so crafty. He's a very really crafty player. He changes it up like quite well, and I think it's his variety. But it'd be quite a slow rally, and then he suddenly injects like a lot of pace into one ball, which mm. suddenly yeah, changes does, yeah. changes a, changes the whole game. But I think Batista are good. He, to be fair to him, he was coming into the net a lot. And he his volume was on point the whole. Yeah, it was. It was really except good. for in that last game. I think he had a match point, and it's been volleying perfect the whole match. And then that what the easiest volley, he just bluffed it. You're like, oh, match point out of all of the ones. But that's just the way it goes in tennis. But on the whole, I, I forget the percentage now, but his uh, percentage of points won at the net was really high. Yeah. And um, yeah. it makes me wonder. I'm not seeing him ever play doubles, but I think he'd be a good double player. Oh, like definitely. Good. Yeah, for sure. He's got I mean, all the characteristics of a player who could be really good at doubles. And now you're going to see him, like you were saying, who was going to be the more favourable matchup. Well, Novak Djokovic cruised through a very easy and, well, we thought was it's going to have to be a real big upset for Struff to uh, yeah, yeah. take out Djokovic, especially the way he beat Sangren. But, well, Struff's had a great tournament. He's going to progress through the rankings now. It's done here. His bank balance of the world are good as well, this tournament. Yeah, for sure. So it's all been, it's been a good plus, really. I'm sure he didn't really expect to beat Djokovic. He tried his best, I'm sure, but it's a bit of a big ask. I know he took a set off him at the Australian Open at the beginning of the year, and we were talking about how maybe that could play a point, a factor, <laughs> because not many people take sets off Djokovic, but like, like we, we saw again... Doesn't didn't do anything, did nah. it? it? Had no effect on the match whatsoever. Just, and Djokovic was doing; it wasn't even playing at full pace, really. Just sort of cleaned him. Uh, just he, he was just seemed like one of those players that will never be able to beat him. Type players. That's just the sad reality. When with those type of player get that far in a competition, and then you come up against someone like him, this you just already really know what's going to happen. And this. Yeah. It's a bit sad. Like I think we would have would have said two 0 Djokovic before the game even started. Mm. It was pretty much the how it played out. And the second, yeah, yeah. he was lucky not to get bageled in the second set. To be honest, yeah, and yeah, just six one. But now Batista are good. If he can make the rallies pretty long, you never know. He might grind another one. You'd, I think, like you said, he could be one to watch for this tournament. You don't know. What? Djokovic is still only just coming back. Well, the big thing with Djokovic now is 21 games unbeaten. So we did a oh. podcast earlier in the year talking about can Djokovic remain undefeated. So far, yeah. 21 game and I, it's looking good for him. And we're in what we got August, yeah, end of August. So we've got September, October, November, December. Few few months left. So um, could happen. Can that can look? I'm asking the question now to you and the fans listening. Can Djokovic remain undefeated this year? If he stays on hard court, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, because his main challenger is going to be probably Rafael Nadal, who hasn't beaten him in how many years is it on our court? So, and he's not probably not going to be playing the French Open, or I don't know if he is Djokovic, is he? I don't. Yeah, know. but there's a few tournaments afterwards, isn't there, on clay yeah. court in Europe? So there's a good chance he'll probably play one of them Masters One Thousand ones. Well, exactly. Um, so. so that we've got all that coming up. We've got uh, playing at the moment. Uh, it's just the other one that we haven't really touched on. It just seems that <laughs> Stefanos Tsitsipas is just playing big server after big server after big well, server. It, it's not just that. He's also playing at a time where we can never talk about Stefanos yeah. Tsitsipas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think we've really spoke too much about him because he's always playing at a time where we can't really watch the match or really comment on it. But we've been watching the highlights, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And keeping sure. up to it as much as possible. And like I said, the other podcast, I thought he was the most informed player from the first round or second round when he come into second it and round, played. Yeah. Uh, but now, it's continued, really. He's played the fr- like three big servers, Anderson, then yep. followed by John it's, Isner. Yeah. And now Apelka right now, is it? Yeah, Apelka. Yep. And it's how are they com- getting on? Uh, it's currently just on serve, really. So it's pretty much how I thought it was going to go. I reckon there's probably going to be a couple of tie breaks we're going to be watching in this match <laughs> because Apelka is going to be hard. He's been... Pushing him closer than Berrettini did, though. He's just been to juice on a 
few serves. So, well, I don't think there's any better pre- preparation for a game against the Pelka than just playing John Isner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. If you could wish for a better game to have before playing a Pelka, it, was, it would be John Isner. <laughs> can't get any eat better, can the it? Best warm up, American, pretty much the same height, <laughs> and somebody who's literally, I don't know, power server. It's just a so. bit of a younger, younger version of him. But yeah. I think a poker's got a few like I don't know. He's got a bit more about his game actually. I feel he's got uh, a lot of potential. I don't want to disrespect John Isner. At the end of the day, he's the highest ranked American on tour. Yes, yeah. And he's done a lot more in his career. But a poker's that sort of younger player coming through, and he's got shows bundles of potential. There's no reason why I don't think he can be uh, have a legacy as, as big as John Isner, if not bigger. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that one. But City Pass looks brilliant. I don't know what's going on at the moment, though. For some reason, uh, at 6-5, Opelka's just walked off the court. I don't know what's going on right now. I oh. uh, don't know if the match is finished. I don't know. But, like, he just put on one of those face masks and just uh, he's just walked off. It's not raining, is it? Maybe. But, yeah. Anyway, there's an interruption in the play. Yeah. So... We'll we'll uh, we'll come back to but I think to pass like you say he's been one of these players who haven't given the uh, the time he deserves really he's been obviously just returning big haymaker serves for the past like uh, three matches now so he's you won't have seen many flowing rallies off of him but he's yeah but been doing the is, it's good that we've had um, in the quarterfinals we got three oh, of the big over. three of the main four. It's over. What happened? You retired? Yeah. I think Opelka's retired. Yeah. Oh. First set. So, oh, that's sad. Pass is, uh, Did it pass his through? Through by default then. And, uh, yeah, well, that's a bit of a crazy, I thought Opelka, like, could have been one to watch, really, with that. So now set of Pass is going to play the winner of a Pelk, of a Raonic, uh, yeah. Kranovic. And it's going to be as fresh as a daisy. Doing it as well. <laughs> He's probably hoping for a three-set, four-hour. Hey, I did say before this could be the year of the Greeks. Yeah, you did. The year right. of the Greeks. We've got on the women's tour. So we go on to the women's. I feel like we've covered yeah, a lot I of think the let's ATP. Let's move over there. They're playing. She's playing at the moment as well, though, and it's not looking great. And it's surprising to say. I think. Joe Connor must have... Don't say surprising. You should say you're happy to say. I am. I'm happy, but I just shocked. Like, you saw <laughs> Joe Connor came back and lost to Jody Burridge, who was number 300 in the world in her first match back. And now, We watched it, didn't we? It was terrible. Yeah. And now she is 6-4, 2-0 up against Maria Sakari and looking, progressing yet again into the next round. And she hasn't dropped the set so far in this... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in this Mate, tournament. Can Hoana Conta win the, win the tournament? I was saying about the Greeks. I was thinking maybe we could see a uh, pass Sakari, the Greek double, but it doesn't look like Joe Conta's got something to say about that. I'm, I don't even want to say that she can because I know that we're going to throw this horrible curse on her. I'm just glad to see that she's playing so well. I yeah, mean, let's not talk too much about her because we don't want to curse her. It'd be good for her to progress and see where she actually goes in this tournament. But another, but uh, brilliant for her that she's doing well, so well. It's great for British tennis as well. I mean, we haven't had much to uh, cheer about uh, in this week, really. Obviously, apart from Murray, Murray I thought Murray was a big plus, even though it, he did go it was out. Good to I see think it's a, still, I still see it as a positive this tournament for him. For sure, but. As Joe Conta, I think this is just like her world's turned upside down. If she goes deep in this tournament, then suddenly everyone's forgotten about what just happened when she came back. Like, this seems like she's somehow just rekindled like that old form, which is incredible. <laughs> Love to see that. And who would she be facing in the next round? Is the uh, if she was to uh, go through against Maria? Is Sakai, it Asaka? I've got a feeling that it's going to be the other. Um, really dangerous person that we were speaking about. Azarenka. Azarenka, mm-hmm. dis- well, I don't say destroyed, but she pretty much did destroy Ons Jabur, who we were really, <laughs> we've done it again. <laughs> oh, we, we gassed up uh, Ons Jabur and she goes out, mate. She's two, <laughs> two sets to love and quite comfortably as well in the second set. So seven, six, and six, two. Azarenka. No, I think it's nice, though, to see Azarenka playing good tennis because we know she's capable. Oh, she's she so looked good. a bit shaky, and um, I think she had a few issues with her trainer and stuff, but her coach. Um, but 
it looks like things are looking on the a lot better now, or even if they're not on court, they certainly are. So yeah, fair play to her, and she's playing some good stuff. So what she potentially could be playing Jaro Conta now. Yeah, potentially. The, in we the, never know. Was it the not... semi-final? Yeah, exactly. Uh, is it the semi-finals? Let me just double check that. Yeah, that'd be semi-finals. And yeah, the other semi-final. semi-final, we've got Naomi no, Osaka. Osaka. She made it through against uh, Kontavit. Kontavit, that's yeah. 2-1, quite a close match. Lost and that's someone set. I feel like we should have spoken about more because Kontavit's been playing really good. Oh, Obviously, yeah, sure. she played in Palermo before on clay. She got so, all the way to the final, had a brilliant tournament there. She was very good. I, 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 lucky to, to, to come up against Fiona Ferrer in like, the form of her life on clay. So that yeah. was a very tricky game. And then through here, she's played all the ma- played a few matches. I don't know if she went through qualifying. I don't think she did, or did she not? No, I don't believe so. I think she's just... She's um, she's 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 I doubt it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. But anyway, she's been smashing it. I don't think she's really dropped too many sets. You'd have to clarify that. But she's been playing some really good uh, stuff. She's and, straight uh, sets all the way up until Osaka. Yeah, uh, so it, it it was a really big ask. And then she won the first set against Osaka as well. But Osaka seemed to be too strong. And uh, she looks like she's probably the favourite now for the tournament. Yeah, but then, does. like like we said, don't rule out some of the other guys. <laughs> yeah. And I who's mean, she who's she playing in the up in the semi final? Well, the one that you were sort of saying she's sneaking through, and no one's really paying attention to her. Elise Mertens is there at the top of the draw, just sneaking past people. She just knocked out. Uh, is it Jessica Pagula? Yeah. And uh, yeah, straight sets again. So she's a bit kudament of her straight sets. Carolina Plith. No, sorry. That's a lie. Madlenovic, 2-1. And she's also beating uh, Peterson as well. So she's yeah, she's knocking out some good players there on the way to uh, semi-finals against the That Star wasn't all in Cincinnati, though, was it? Yeah. Those matches? Yeah, well, those in uh, Cincinnati. And now, so we're going to be looking Why are there at... so many? You said four. What, she played... She's played in the round of 32 against Peterson. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, my bad, my bad. Yeah, so now she's uh, just won the quarterfinals, she's semi-finals against Osaka, but wow. I'd still see Osaka winning that, to be honest, but I don't want to jinx her, yeah. but I probably I think have. both of them players are actually quite unpredictable, really. They've both got uh, so much talent, but they're not really people you can rely on. Well, women's so tennis be... is unpredictable, I feel, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but these two specifically, they're so much capable, like, they're brilliant players, but I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think it's going to be quite evenly poised. Uh, could We could see um, one dominate one set, another dominate another, and then a close third set or something like that, to be fair. I, I don't, uh, don't be surprised if Azarenka wins this tournament, I think. Hmm. I, yeah, just, could, fair enough. Sure, I, just, I don't think so, personally. It's well, <laughs> look what I've done. I've just said Azarenka. That'll be potentially Joe Conza's next match. If I keep going against her, she's going to win the whole thing. I think so. <laughs> I'm just uh, trying I'll to see help your tactics. Joe, trying to help Joe Conza on. Maybe oh, let's not say John Con- Sakari's still in it. By the way, Sakari's yeah, yeah, still in it. It's only one break of serve. As far as I know, unless yeah, the Conza's done a madness. Nah, it's setting a break at the moment. So yeah. But, yeah, so the women's thing's looking really interesting. Let's move over to the challengers. Obviously, we had the challenger in Prague. And there's some interesting uh, results that were going on over there. We had, well, Dimitri Popko. He's been uh, just sort of easing his way through the draw there. He beat uh, Yannick Madden. Well, Popko's a player who's played a lot of tennis. A bit like team, really. In the exhibitions, he was playing every day. Uh, he had quite. He had some good results actually in the exhibition. I, I think he won more or less every game. Well. Yeah, he had a few funny ones, didn't he? But it's exhibition I tennis. I don't think Pitt. They're really. I don't know. I feel like you always. Ex- you do see. You see a lot of that. To be fair. Yeah. Well, then moving. I think Krajinovic the... lost a few exhibitions against unknown ranked players as well, and look how he's doing now. So. Yeah, we're going to have the quarterfinals up next. So. Some players who just made it through to the quarterfinals. The person we were uh, speaking about, mind your neck, Rinder neck. He's, <laughs> he's uh, through. It knocks out Daniel Masur. 6 3 6 3. Really good result for him. Talon Griexpor. He's been playing some really amazing stuff uh, yeah, over has. this break. And he's just destroyed Sergei Stokowski. 6 1 6 1. I was really surprised to see that. I thought, uh, Stokowski mm, I wasn't would... really. Greek sport has been playing some good stuff. I've, I've watched a few of his matches. Uh, notably, uh, 
I'm going to forget who I what game I watched now. Um, it was against the player who's in really good form. Oh, it's, it eludes me now the name, but uh, he'd come through that and beat and beat him as well. So, uh, uh, Greek sports are one to watch. I wouldn't rule him out. Yeah, for sure. I think he, yeah, he's definitely is one to watch. As is another guy, Robin Harsa. He's made it through again, and. Surprise, the bookies keep making him the underdog in all of these matchups as well. He's playing Kolar, and uh, that makes it now six wins from his last seven matches for, uh, for Robin Harsa. So, well, well, we know better than anyone. This guy has been around the tour for a while, and he oozes class. Yeah. He's a showman. We've spoke to him on the podcast. And, yeah, what more Truth can I say him. about him? He's a really good player. <laughs> Really top top player, nice got bundles guy. of experience. I think experience does go quite a long way sometimes on the Challenger Tour because you're often playing against people sort of trying to make a career for themselves, starting off, and um, experience yeah. can be a valuable tool. Let's see how he gets on against Talon Greeks, Paul. Then that's really a, the sort of matchup of the next round, I think. Oh, they're both Dutch as well, I believe. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a real battle between those two. We've got Popco, Ryan the Neck, yeah, uh, if, and. We'll see how Stan Vavrinka gets on against Van der Schlup, or Van der Zanschlup, sorry, and Karatsev Gulbis playing tomorrow. So they can fill in the next quarterfinal. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Oh, we also All I'm going to say about that is I see Gulbis. I think Gulbis beating him. I'm sorry. I think forgot. he's going to disrupt his rhythm. He might do. I'm sorry. I've left off two at the bottom there. But Renzo Olivo down there. And uh, is it Seb Offner? Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Offner, the playing. Austrian guy. Yeah, that's right. And as we've uh, seen recently, beat Dominic Team on clay as well. So yeah, exactly. Granted, that was an exhibition, but it just shows he's a, he's got a lot of potential. Yeah, he's not been playing too well of late, Offner, but uh, he has got the he did. He's beat. got a result in him, doesn't he? Yeah, and last time they've only played once, and he did win the only meeting between him and Oliva. Uh, and the only other match there, Lucas Rosal and uh, Herbert is the mm. second seed, Herbert. So. You'd expect to see him go deep into this tournament, really. He's but he was in the other tournament, wasn't he? He was in the last program. Yeah, he's the same as Robin. Yeah, and he got knocked out against Karatsev. Uh, Karatsev yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both him and Harsa losing to Karatsev. So you never know. He's in the other side of the draw again, Karatsev. But maybe they can avoid him this time. Just, yeah, he won't be able to avoid Stan, though, will he? He's going to get Stan before the no final. No one can avoid Stan, mate. Stands the diesel there. Engine, roaring <laughs> in the background, getting ready to get started up. I know. Shall we move away from Prague and move over to Trieste? Yeah, it's my favourite one. Yeah, this is the one where it's got, and as you said... This is where our boys are in. This is where giants are slayed, and Giganti was slayed by Fikovic. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was going to happen... Fikovic well, I don't know what I had. I had a bit of a moment of mad- madness in the last podcast. I said Fikovic is going to end up winning the tournament. And I've just oh. seen now, he's ended up beating Gigante and he's been drawn against someone else who won his, his last match, Lorenzo Massetti. Now I'm, just to- I'm torn between do I want <laughs> Fikovic to win or do I want Massetti, my young gun? Oh, exactly. This is it. And he look who Massetti beat. We said we didn't really even give Popperin a chance and he's beat Popper in straight sets. So Massetti through and also somebody else who's lurking there. And I said that I thought the winner of the tournament would come out of that match. And I was surprised to see Viola 4-1 up against Carlos Alcaraz Garcia in the first set. And I was messaged you, didn't I? I was like, wow, mm. he's really taking it to him. Next thing I know, I look up. Alcaraz has just won five games straight and it's 6-4 Alcaraz. Then the second set just destroyed him, 6-2. Yeah, too Damn much it. quality, Alcaraz. Yeah, so much quality. And then there's another one more match on there, Echeverry versus Mats Morang. And Mats Morang beaten. So Echeverry's through to the next round to face Alcaraz. That'll be a good game. I think oh, Alcaraz will probably do him, but... The thing is, Alcaraz, I rate him too highly now. I know. It's like, there's no, there's no opposition, really. What he'll play where I think, mm, it doesn't, challenges, it doesn't, it doesn't not stand a chance now. This guy is just the next, the next gen, for sure. 17-year-old, ridiculous player. Or is he 16? I don't even know. He's I so think, young. I think he's... Oh, that's a good point. 
Let's have a quick. No, it doesn't matter. He's either 16 or 17. He's so young and he's just ridiculous talent. And obviously, Massetti's only, Massetti's only 18 himself. Exactly. So these young players, it's a shame they can't face, face off in the final, them two, really. But I don't think yeah. the draw permits that. But I'm sure there will. I'm sure that will be a final eventually one day. Oh, for sure. Maybe a French Open final. Yeah, well, I don't know about Rafa. What about <laughs> Rafa, my, you've got my, another 10 years of Rafa, yeah? He's there at 50 years old, still there, whacking it back <laughs> with that aggressive top and giving it a vamos. With a bubble up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, mate. You know how he rolls. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much tied up all of the results and everything from all of the uh, matches. But yeah, I think we'll uh, cover the rest of the stuff as the results come in. Obviously, uh, we've got the matches which are playing tomorrow. The big matches, which are Brownich, Kranovic, Djokovic, Batista, Agut. Yeah, and we'll get back to you on that. And then we've got Mertens, Osaka, and the other one still to be decided. But it's looking like it could be Joe Conta that could be. How about Sitipas? He'll be playing tomorrow as well, right? Uh, I think he. I think it rolls over. I get, uh, roll over. See, it pass. It doesn't get any podcast time, unfortunately. They don't give him. A, I'm just a, desperate. I've got <laughs> cut to the straw. I'll just have a little to actually watch a sit pass match in full and know, have a good chat yeah. about him on the podcast. It's just crazy, isn't it? Like it's some some of the well, Kra, uh, well, Krajinovic is playing at midnight and. Right. Yeah, he's playing at Raonic at midnight tonight, so we're not actually going to be able to speak to him about him until tomorrow. And then we've gonna it's gonna be the same difference with the winner of that is gonna be playing Sita Pass, obviously. So they're gonna to have to play at midnight tomorrow night. So mm. then we'll probably miss that one and we'll have to give you the uh, coverage on probably Friday on that. So Oh well whatever happens with the final we'll do something special. We'll try and get something done. We we'll have to, might even have to do a really late podcast or something just so we can watch it. Yeah, exactly. um, but how I want to end this podcast really is talk about I know we spoke about him but Novak Djokovic I feel like it's the only fitting way to end it at the beginning of this tournament before it started we had a lot of hope in the fact that not that we didn't want Djokovic to win but we were talking about how this is a brilliant opportunity for some younger player to come through it's a well typically it was more referring to the US Open if I'm honest but it's very similar in terms of they're both next to each other and they're both relatively big tournaments Obviously, uh, you can't really compare a Masters 1000 to a, a Grand Slam, but it's still no, it's not, no, uh, you can't be taking it lightly for sure. And Djokovic for me now, it's just like, it doesn't, it looks like it's the same as all the other <laughs> tournaments we see uh-huh. where we, we talk about all these players, all these potential players, or I reckon he could do well here, he could do well there. And then it, you know what's going to happen. Djokovic, Federer, and Dow will win it, and that's it. And um, crazy, the, more, the, week, the more the week's gone on, it feels like it's going to be another one of them situations and Djokovic is going to end up winning Cincinnati, probably winning US Open. And then we reckon Rafael Nadal will probably win the French. And that'll be that. <laughs> and all this talk about all these potential players <laughs> winning this, that and that. It's very That's crazy. why we should talk about... Oh yeah, we've, one thing we've not mentioned why we're talking about some such big big names is on the WTA. We didn't talk about Serena getting uh, beaten by Sakari. Yes. That and that's right there. Result. Yeah, and yeah like I said, I've, I've already made a statement about Serena saying how I feel like it's, she's kind of finished. And um, yeah. that third set, she looked like she gave up. Yeah, 6-1, wasn't it? Yeah, but she was like completely just, I don't know. Do you know like where you, I've done it before? Where you're playing, you're not in the mood to really be there. You've yeah. kind of sort of admitted defeat already. So you're just going for wild shots, going for your second serves, hitting them like over the top because you don't really, you feel like the game's already passed you, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I just feel like I've never really seen Serena play like that before. It's like she's just getting really frustrated and she's just kind of given up. Well, she, she's, don't forget, she is, what, 39? She's coming up. And I think she said 38. Pretty, yeah, but I think she's coming up to 39. No, you're always adding a year, you, aren't you, Ben? <laughs> well, <laughs> she's been around for a long time and I don't think she owes anybody anything for staying around no. any longer than she wants to. If she's only do, if she's still enjoying it, fair enough, but everyone's always going to turn out to watch her, but no one wants to see, no one wants to ever see the decline of somebody. Like, you That's always the worst leave thing. on top. Yeah, always leave, like, obviously someone like Pete Sampras, like, he left when he was still pretty much on top. It was just a little tiny slide and then he just knew when to get out, I think. 
Just I so saw you know. a really good interview today from from Serena Williams when she was at Wimbledon many years back when she was younger. And the interviewer asked her saying, oh, we feel like you'll still be playing when you're 38 on court, playing in these big tournaments. And she was like, if, you, if I'm still playing at 38, I want someone to come on court and drag me off. Well, they might now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's wrap it up there. I think we've spoken yeah. enough about um, today's tennis. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe if you've not already. And we'll see you again soon for the semi-finals of Cincinnati. Indeed. Peace.